today I will be talking about FFI um, in Dino. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I guess some of you might know me uh, through that profile picture. Um, I am Little Livia on GitHub, and yeah, that's my Twitter. So I mostly work on performance, node compatibility, and the CLI in general. Um, so what is FFI? Uh, FFI is a mechanism that allows a program written in another programming language to work with, um, to call functions into another programming language. Uh, it can be used to reuse code from a library written in C uh, and use it in Rust. Uh, so, for example, in C, you would do something like this. Uh, if you are using SQLite, you would first define the ABI you're using. So, extern C, um, you would define the return type, you would define the symbol name, the parameter types, etc. Uh, and when you compile it, the compiler will link the library for you. and do generate code to do the function calls. Uh, but how do we do this in JavaScript? JavaScript is not exactly compiled um, with an asterisk. Uh, we need a way to do DL open in JavaScript. And so Dino exposes this DL open API for you to um, open native libraries directly into Dino using, run, uh, using JavaScript at runtime. Uh, so similar to how you would define a function in C, here you define the parameters, the name of the symbol, and the result. Uh, and you can just do use it directly in JavaScript. Um, the way it works is a little complicated. Um, so there's the basic stuff, like opening the library using DL open. There's um the lib ffi library that is used to generate uh, used to um do the calling convention uh, so it's correctly done you, you in the c abi we use dl sim to uh get the function address and the rest is what dino adds on top of that uh so dino basically has these two things called turbo call uh which I'll come to uh, in a second. And uh, in the end, you get a JavaScript function that you can directly exp uh, call from JS. Um, as a user of Dino FFI, you, have, you do not have to care about any of this. Um, and this is just uh, a very technical deep dive into it. So um, how would you represent um, stuff like this directly into Rust? So Dino is written in Rust, and something like FFI could be implemented uh, using this snippet uh, here. So we have a struct of uh, a struct of parameters and result, and we have this function called call symbol. First argument we get from V8, and the second one we'll set ourselves. Um, we get the parameters result. We convert JS values to native values, and then we call the actual function, and then we return, uh, convert the native result to JS result, and then we give it back to V8, and that's a lot of work. Um, but this is what uh, a basic implementation look like. Um, but it turns out JavaScript is sometimes compiled. Um, thanks to adaptive optimization done by V8, um, it will optimize certain pieces of your code, so it uh, so certain very hot parts in your code will be directly replaced by jitted code um, using just-in-time compilation. You can think of it like um, going to a store, uh, and the shopkeeper has these frequently buyed items directly in front of you, um, so you don't have to like roam around. Um, and get stuff. So uh, adaptive optimization and V8 works something like that. Um, so well, how d exactly does it work? V8 has this um, thing called V8 fast API calls, and 
you can just directly give V8 some uh, information about your native function, like what it what the parameter it is going to accept and the result, and you give it the function pointer. Uh, so in this case, this is uh, the Rust code for a SQLite binding. Um, so you can see we accept um, the pointer to integers. One would be the index, second would be the actual integer that you want to store into the database. And then you call SQLite here. And here we, we g tell V8 that, hey, this is the parameter, this is the result type, and this is the function address. Um, all of this needs to happen at runtime, so we cannot actually write this. Uh, so we need some sort of assembler to assemble all of this into runtime um, in Rust. That's when a turbo call comes in. TurboCall is a just-in-time assembler uh, written using Dynasm RS. Dynasm is a Rust crate, uh, which can be used to write uh, assemblers in Rust. Um, why do we need, need TurboCall? Uh, just like I showed you in the previous slide, we needed to generate these uh, function templates so that uh, there is no cost at runtime, and we can take the V8 fast path. So it does stuff like shifting arguments. Um, for example, here we do not need the first argument, so we'll just skip it. Uh, here the yeah, and we pass the arguments. In the second example, complex types like buffers they need to be uh, accessed. The pointer needs to be accessed. So all of this stuff uh, is completely managed by TurboCall. Uh, so this gets a bit low level. And on the left side, you can see what uh, you as a user would give to DL open in Dino. And the right side is the, is the um, assembly it generates uh, at runtime. So you give it the buffer. You give it um, stuff that about the integers that you're going to accept. And at runtime, this function is generated. And it jumps back to the actual SQLite function. So it's kind of cool that. You can just, in a few lines of JavaScript, you have this super optimized uh, assembly code, um, which essentially like very little cost at runtime. It's like five instructions. Uh, same for very complex types like U64. U64 can be represented as a big int or a number in um, in JavaScript, and so yeah, we can we can also generate a highly optimized assembly code for that. Um, also, TypeScript just works um, because we already know the uh, parameter and results. We can uh, j we can have some nice typings at uh, using TypeScript, and so you don't have to really wrap the uh, whole API around a TypeScript library. It just works by default. Um, everyone likes some charts, so here are two benchmarks. One is SQLite three. And one is DuckDB. Um, the the dark one is Zeno FFI compared against Bun FFI, and the other one compared against a Node.js module. A uh, Node does not have FFI, uh, I think, so we are using the whatever the most popular library is. So I think it's using better SQLite here, and here it is using DuckDB. Um, as you can see, it's it's quite fast um, and. Uh, there are a lot of libraries out there, like SQLite 3, that uh, have have really um, nice performance compared to even native, like directly using C. It has like on par performance. Um, so what exactly like d did I miss? Um, there's a lot to FFI than just synchronous calls, like I showed you. There's you can do a lot of background tasks using um, Using await, you can uh, you can specify the symbol to be non-blocking, so it runs it in a worker thread. You could even use callbacks. You could call JavaScript functions directly from native code uh, using dino.unsafe callback uh, and give it to a function. Uh, it also has pointer APIs um, to directly deal with pointer. Of course, that's very unsafe, and and you should <laughs> know what you're doing. Um, so yeah, there there are pointer APIs in dino.unsafe pointer, and there's also dino.unsafe pointer view for uh, yeah a bit more um, pointer pointer management APIs. Um, 
demo. Oh, so we do have time, so I'll do a quick demo. Um, oops. Okay. Let me create a directory. Let's start by creating a native module. Um, I guess this would be in Rust. So, uh, no mangle. Ex oh, we forgot pub, extern, c, fan, and then let's just call it add. Uh, let's just add two numbers. <laughs> U32, B, U32. Returning a U32 and A plus B. Okay. And then, uh, oh. Oops. Because that's a great type. Yeah. So we have uh, our compiled uh, dynamic library. And now let's use Dino to call this library. So main.ts and we'll use dino.dl open oh god what's the spelling oh sorry <laughs> um add and we can specify the parameters which will be u32 comma u32 the result is also u32 and we can get add and call it directly one comma two and actually let's print it yeah so dino run allow ff5 and ff5 is unstable so We'll use unstable flag um, main.ts. And yeah, one plus two is three. Wow. Uh, let's actually also run a benchmark. We can use dino.bench to see how the performance looks like. So, oh, I actually have to import it. <laughs> Uh, main.ts yeah export oh I guess for default add yeah this should work and this time I'll use oh Dino bench allow if I allow uh, an unstable. Oh god. <laughs> Default. Import that. Mm. Oh, it's a default. Import. Wow. Please work. Yeah, that's about six. Uh, oh, it's too big. Yeah, it's about six nanoseconds per iteration. That's quite low. Um, if you if you compare something like without the fast calls and all of these optimization, that's about hundred nanoseconds. So it's almost a uh, an, an order of magnitude improvement. So. Uh, of course, you can do more than just add two numbers. You can uh, have a lot of complex bindings. There are a lot of uh, other um, other libraries like, uh, I guess there's one for binding the GPU. There's one for auto-compiling your C++, temp uh, C++ headers directly into Dino uh, bindings. There's also Dino Bindgen, which is a Rust crate um, to auto-generate bindings. And so, uh, yeah, thank you. Hi.